Daniel Cormier has been talking about his fight with Stipe for a while now. They fought in like March of last year. That's off the top of my head, but I, I'm close in there somewhere. I mean, it's, it's been a year. It's been 15 months since that match happened. I'm talking about him versus Stipe. That's on the horizon, a month away. And Daniel was coming out, and he was saying a lot of things that you really want to hear an athlete say because they were negative. He was giving himself a real self-assessment that was very open and fair. He used the term fumble. He was using it, this football analogy, and he must have said fumble 20 times, but he was using examples like, I wasn't as in shape as I should have been. I took some things for granted going into that fight. If he finds a way to hurt me, talking about Stipe, if he finds a way to hurt me, I need to fight back like I have every other time in my life. I got tired. It's okay. I can admit it. Well, these are very good self-assessments, and you always want to see an athlete, if you're cheering for him, if you're getting ready to bet on him, being aware of what happened the last time. And so many athletes, particularly in combat, don't. And boxing is a lot more guilty than MMA. But if you lose a fight, you never accept it. You blame, you, you fire your whole team. You move camps. You bring in a new team. You got a whole new corner with you. It was never your fault. Boxers are very, very known for doing that. MMA guys less. Daniel Cormier, not at all. Not even a little bit. You're going to have good nights. You're going to have bad nights. If you do take something for granted, if you're going in against Stipe in his case, a guy that you had just beat in the very first round, for you to go in there and take some liberties with training or preparation is going to be a very real thing. It seems to me with Daniel Cormier, from an outsider looking in, you can break everything down to the number that the scale reads at the weigh-in. Daniel Cormier has a weight. And if he's talking about things like I wasn't quite in shape and he's talking about his cardio, I would want somebody to remind him, Daniel, when you weigh 248 pounds and you're taking on a guy that weighs 230 pounds, you're carrying around and having to move around more weight. And just like if you guys were to put your foot on the line of a track, first one around eight times wins, people are going to hedge a bet on just whoever's lighter. They're just going to assume the guy that's carrying 20 less pounds is going to be able to move a little bit better and a little bit faster for a little bit longer and beat you in that two-mile race. Whether that proves to be true or not, there is still a relevance to the fact that that is going to be perception. And in a broad stroke, you've now made a good bet if you just bet on the smaller athlete. You've never seen either one of them run. You've never seen either one of them race. You know, they're both good athletes and they got some car. You're going to bet on whoever's lighter. So it wouldn't necessarily be that Daniel wasn't in shape or that he he took some shortcuts in training. Word I'm using, not a word he used, but that's how I interpreted this. It wouldn't necessarily be true as much as, what do you weigh? If you were disciplined with your eating, and that's hard to do when you're at heavyweight. Look at any heavyweight. They might be overweight, but they're not over 265. I mean, you see where your mind would do that? I got, I've, I'm got i still 17 pounds underweight. Well, okay, fair enough. But what is your what is the weight that you need to be? And I don't know that answer for Daniel. I don't think just south of 250 is the number. I think just south of 240 is the number, right around that 236, 238 mark. And before any of you, you Einsteins try to go online and tell me that Daniel weighed in at 236 while Stipe weighed in at 230, Daniel found out that Stipe was going to weigh in light. He thought that was some kind of a mind game, so he went and cut weight for that weigh-in. That fight took place in California. California weighs you in the day you show up to the competition. Now, the competition's going to go on, but Andy Foster, the head of California, just wants that documented. He wants to know how much weight you're putting back on. Heavyweights put on a grand total of no weight. They're not cutting any weight. So Stipe, who weighed in 230 at the weigh-in, showed up the day of the fight and weighed 230. Daniel Cormier, who weighed in at 236 at the weigh-ins, 40 pounds under the limit, weighed 248 the next day. He put on 12 pounds. I only used that to further the statement that I just made that Daniel had cut weight for the weigh-ins for whatever reason. For whatever reason, he did. And we have proof of that by the fact that a heavyweight who was 30 pounds underweight put on 12 pounds between the weigh-in and the actual competition. Now, I do bring that to you because I know how hard Daniel works. And to make believe that Daniel was out of shape, I also saw that fight. I think Daniel is being a little bit hard on himself. Daniel looked really, really good in that fight. 
The other side of the coin is so did Stipe. But when you put the two baddest dudes in the world in there, that's what's going to happen. That's what's called a good fight, right? There's a reason that there's a world championship on the line. There's a reason that it's at the end of the night called a main event. Yeah, they're both going to look good. Daniel did very clearly change strategies in that contest. The first round, he did what he does. Shot that single leg, lifted Stipe up in the air, took him down, kept him there. Daniel never went back to a takedown. Now, there is a question of why. Daniel has stated publicly at one point, I didn't go to the takedown because it's so much energy, but I also thought I was doing really well on my feet. Well, he's right. He was doing well on his feet. Daniel was winning rounds without the takedown. Now, it's a riskier game. He's not able to use some of that size. There's times in a contest where that size is a tremendous advantage, particularly when you're wrestling. In wrestling, size is very helpful. In striking, it is not. It is why you don't see these great big heavyweight boxers that are cutting down to the, the heavyweight limit. In fact, I can only think of one in history, which is Tyson Fury, our current champion. But most of the heavyweights, whether it was Muhammad Ali, who in his prime weighed 198 pounds. Mike Tyson, who in his prime was 220 pounds. In a striking contest, you always want to be the smaller guy. In a wrestling contest, you'd like to be the bigger guy. But when Daniel eliminates the wrestling from the game plan for rounds two, three, and four, you could see where people are going to question and go, why did you do that? So I think that Daniel is being a little bit hard on himself, but I do think when an athlete is preparing for a competition, that could be a good thing. I mean, what in that statement did Daniel say that if you're a Daniel supporter, you didn't like? He's saying he's going to work harder. Okay, great. He's saying he learned from that fight and took some things for granted. Okay, great. I mean, if he's going to improve in areas that he doesn't necessarily need to prove, improve, it would look as though he just needs to improve with his strategy and his game plan. And I've always wondered why he didn't go back and take Stipe down. I have taken the statement that he made, the one and only statement he made, which is it uses a lot of energy, and I thought I was doing well on my feet. I've taken that as his answer. But he also made that very early after the contest. Perhaps over this time, he has changed. And his answer is, look, I couldn't see the takedown. The way Stipe was moving, the way he was pumping, you know, lefts and rights at me. I just couldn't see it. I didn't see an opportunity. I'm going to have to go through that fire and just get my hands on him. That might solve the problem. That might be exactly what he needs to do stylistically, but I do think we are going to know a lot about this contest and the winner of the contest just when they get on the scale because everybody does have a number. And if you think I'm going into a heavyweight fight and I used to be a 205 pounder, I don't want to be too small, I need to put weight on, that is a very logical conclusion to come to. You could see how that number could get away from you. If you looked at it and said, I am 30 pounds under the weight limit, weight is simply not an issue, you could see how that number could get away from you. But I do think when Daniel's talking about getting fatigued or getting outstruck, that the number one relevance there was just that he had a quicker guy in front of him who could go harder a little bit longer, but the only reason that Stipe was in that position is because Stipe was lighter. 